In this video, I'm going to talk to you about rapid development of mobile learning. Okay, let's get started. This video contains part of a presentation that I gave at the Adobe Learning Summit held in Las Vegas, Nevada, November 15, 2016. Normally, my channel focuses on Adobe Captivate. However, this talk was software agnostic in that the principles I discussed could be applied to any authoring tool. There are many reasons for creating mobile learning instead of just offering your e-learning for desktop users. The obvious one is that lots of people have smartphones. According to the Ericsson Mobility Report, the number of mobile subscriptions now exceeds the world's population. And according to that same report, smartphone subscriptions is nearly at 4 billion. But why does that matter? Well, for starters, people want to use their mobile devices. All you have to do is look at the amount of data being consumed. Since 2013, the amount of mobile data usage has gone up over five times the original amount. By offering your learning on mobile platforms, your completion rates will go up. Think about it. If you had a choice between sitting at your desk in a stuffy office or sitting in a cafe enjoying a nice coffee, where would you want to complete your training? This also speaks to engagement as well. Employees who have an opportunity to complete training under such circumstances are going to feel engaged and empowered and that their company respects them. But increasing where and when employees complete their training also speaks to maximizing productivity. You certainly cannot mandate that employees complete their training on their own time. However, if the employee decides to get a jump start on their day by completing training from home or during their commute, this only makes them that much more ready to be productive when they arrive at the workplace. You can also consider the health benefits of mobile training. A healthy workforce is a productive one. The ability to go outside and enjoy the fresh air improves people's mental and physical health. With the right type of mobile learning design, employees could even complete training while they work out. Offering the employee a choice and some autonomy with the completion of their training also speaks to engagement once again. If you trust employees to complete their training away from the confines of their workplace, they feel valued as an employee. An engaged employee will always perform better. Let's now talk about the five key strategies that I use when rapidly designing for mobile. I say rapidly because expected turnaround times from stakeholders is getting smaller and smaller. Information needs to be available to employees as soon as it's needed. If it's not there, employees will either get their information from other sources like search engines or social media, or the company will look for other instructional designers who can deliver more content in less time. The first area I'd like to talk about is a technology needs analysis. Like all design cycles, there needs to be a stage where a needs analysis is conducted. I put it to you that a technology needs analysis needs to be completed as well. Poll your audience and learn what type of mobile devices the employees are using. Perhaps the company has given all the sales staff a particular mobile phone for their daily use. Designing with the aspect ratio and resolution of that device in mind just makes sense. Recently, I've been working with a company that was considering mobile design, and I put together a technical needs analysis that answered many of the design decisions that I needed to make when developing new e-learning for an organization. So here are some examples of the questions that I included. On a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is low and 10 is high, what is the experience level of employees when it comes to e-learning? This, first of all, gives you an idea of how you can design your e-learning. What percentage of employees use a company-provided mobile device, such as a smartphone or a tablet, to get the majority of their work done? What percentage of employees use a PC to get the majority of their work done every day? What is the default screen resolution for the majority of employees' use on a primary computing device, smartphone, tablet, or PC? And here's an important question. Do employees have access to the company's learning management system from home? Questions like these will help give you a little more information when it comes time to making design decisions for your e-learning project or mobile learning project. 
Next, I'd like to talk about designing good templates. Using a well-built and fully tested template will save you development time. Your mobile learning courses might end up with hundreds of various interactive objects. The key to rapid development of mobile learning is having a template, theme, or both with the hundreds of design decisions already implemented. This way you can get down to the details of just building a really great mobile course. Let's talk about preparing your resources. One of the things that I've seen very often in my own career is that the availability of resources needed to build your e-learning doesn't become available until very late in the design and development cycle. I recommend that you gather your resources and prepare them for rapid development during the days leading up to your development time. For example, when video or images are made available to you, take the time to prepare them for mobile delivery. Make sure that they're in the most appropriate format and when possible, reduced in size to maximize for mobile delivery. Now let's talk about not reinventing the wheel. I can't tell you how many times I have seen comments or questions on my channel or on the forums with developers asking how to build a particular type of interaction. They always need the answer fast because they have to deliver their project within a week or so. Coming up with really cool new interactions for your mobile learning is a cornerstone of what we do, but you shouldn't do it while you're developing with a tight timeline. There isn't going to be enough time to test these interactions out and make sure that they work under all circumstances. This is not the time you want to experiment with new ideas. If you have a tight timeline that needs to be met, stick with your tried and true learning interactions that are always built into your template. Spend your downtime coming up with the next really great idea. And if your company uses separate designers and your job is to develop courseware, make sure your designers are on the same page with regards to what can be delivered. Regular meetings between the designers and the developers can really help with this. Let's now talk about practice with responsive. Having a solid understanding on how to develop for responsive design is crucial for delivering mobile content. Knowing when you want an object to be positioned and sized by pixels, percentage of screen, or percentage relative to other objects is super important. As you transition to smaller screen sizes, consider optional objects that might not need to be taking up small screen real estate. Move these items into your scrap area or exclude them from certain breakpoints where they don't contribute to the learning. Guys, if you found this video helpful, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you're new to Captivate and don't have time to build your next e-learning project from scratch, consider hiring me. My goal is to always help you achieve your company's business goals through creative, effective training. You can check out my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD. And if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future videos, feel free to write them below in the comments section. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.